Today we welcome Tyler Aronson to the podcast. Tyler is a top three quarterback prospect in the class of 2024 from North Palm Beach, Florida. He's listed at 6'2", 200 with offers from some big time programs such as UMiami and Wake Forest. Tyler, how you doing? Good, how are you? Doing well, doing well. I'm your host, Schwally. We got Drew in the building. Drew, how you doing? How's it going, guys? Tyler, so good to have you here. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Hang time headlines, as always, like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Spotify, run it up, and we got a great guest today in the building. Check the stats, dog. I can see the future with my mask up. We hang time. I'm a blast I mean, we like to do this with a lot of our guests we have on. Can you just take us back to the beginning, like... Talk a little bit about your introduction to football. I mean, you're a highly touted prospect now, doing a lot of great things on and off the football field. But, like, how did you even start football? Did you have any parents or coaches who played? Yeah, so my dad played college football a little bit. And he played a lot in high school, too. And he's always been a big football fan. My mom's always really liked football. She grew up in a football family, too. They've always been big on sports as well. So I really tried out every sport. I tried out baseball, soccer basketball but football I always got a different feeling about it It always gave me that different type of feeling when I got on the field and I always got happiness from it and it's always gave me a different vibe if you know what I mean so since I ever stepped on the field I always knew it was going to be the right sport for me and when you started playing football did you immediately start at quarterback or did you switch to quarterback a little later on yeah I started at quarterback because my first quarterback coach who's now my head coach coach Cresser he always says start at quarterback so even if you don't play when you get older you have knowledge for every other position so yeah i've always been a quarterback damn that's crazy smart i've actually never heard that before but like that's for my kids yeah. if i'm gonna get them into football for sure gonna have them start at the quarterback position belichick's down there in florida now but he always used to love using like edelman and like muhammad sanu those types of guys the wide receivers who can also huck it down the field on some wild trick yeah. plays yeah so tell me a little more about your father. You said he played college football. Where did he play? What position did he play? He played at a small school in Kentucky, Cumberland, Kentucky. He played for a year there, but he went to UCF. He wasn't big in football in college, but he's always been a big fan. After high school, he's always been a big University of Miami fan, so it's been pretty awesome. A big who fan? University of Miami. Oh, I know the University of Miami. I'm going to the University of Miami next year. So I'll be down there rooting on the Canes. I've been a big U fan for years, though. Yeah, I love the environment. I love the Canes. So is your whole family, like, from Florida? You guys have been in Florida for a while? Yeah, my dad grew up in New York and my mom grew up in California. But once my mom moved down, my grandparents became season ticket holders for the Miami Hurricanes so ever since then we've been pretty big Hurricane fans and my dad's always liked them for a while even before he moved down to Florida from New York he's always liked them yeah no they were they were good before my time they <laughs> they're, they're, guys like you have to bring us back we gotta <laughs> we need some yeah. big time recruiting I'm always tuned in on the recruiting and we've been looking good the can the canes are rising all right, so you mentioned a coach early on that told you to play quarterback. Can you run me back through him? You know, how big of a role did he play in you growing up playing football? You know, is he still coaching you? What's that relationship like? Yeah, so he's actually my head coach now, Coach Eric Cresser. And first of all, like talking about like his background, he actually played football at the school that I go to now, the Benjamin School. And then for college he went to florida and he was a backup for danny warfel he actually got to play a little bit and then he transferred to marshall where he won a national championship there with randy moss did he ever tell you like any sick stories about randy moss he just told me like their relationship throughout college in that national championship year and how like and he's able to tell you like how it was to play with some of the best receivers so I obviously never take it for granted what he has to say. So he was my first quarterback coach and still is. And ever since I was five years old, I've been training with him. And he always said that you should start training as a quarterback. So that's what I did. And I stuck with it. But he's taught me so much stuff on and off the field and so much mechanics, football smarts and all that stuff. So I'm so grateful for him. And he's definitely been a big role model and played a big role in where I am right now with my game. Damn, that's someone who's been with you from day one. That's really wild and great to see. I think a lot of the interviews we have, these players transfer all around. They're 
going to different coaches, and I bet that consistency really helps your game a lot. Now, you mentioned that you played some other sports. Are you still playing them at all now? Like, when did that stop? When did you really start to fall in love with football? Yeah, I still play some basketball, but I remember when I was in sixth grade. Actually, it was fifth grade, and I realized that I really love football, and I want to, you know, spend as much time that I can on it. And I still am, like, big into doing other sports, and I still enjoy sports other than football, but I wanted to spend the majority of my time on football because I thought that if I have a chance of playing a sport at the next level, it's going to be that. And I also enjoy it the most, too, so that's when I really realized and so it was like fifth, sixth grade that you realized that you had the potential to go to college for it and potentially even more? Those were my goals, but I always knew like I was the best at football and like I enjoyed doing it the most too. So that's when I really realized. So Take it back to a little bit to like youth football. You're talking about this moment of realization. Is there like a specific play, a specific season, a specific game early on that you were like, damn, I'm pretty good at this quarterback thing. Like, I can play. Yeah, well, I'm always a humble person. I've always been one. But I'd say the one, like, time when I really realized was when my team won the Pop Warner Super Bowl in sixth grade because I've always, like, grown up watching it, and that's been my goal. Me and my dad, who was a coach, one of the coaches, we've been trying to build a team that was hopefully good enough to eventually win it. And being able to win it, was pretty awesome and it just gave me like a realization that anything's really possible and it was just it took a lot to sink in like it took a lot of time because i was like wow this is really happening because i grew up ever since i was like a young kid watching it on youtube watching all the games all that and i always wanted to be there when i got older and being able to be there but not only be there and win the whole thing was really awesome so i think that gave me some realization that i'm pretty good at what i'm doing but i still have a long ways to go and you also talked about, you know, your team, how it takes a whole team to win the Pop Warner Super Bowl. Do you have any teammates from that team that you still play with today, that you're still buddies with today? Yeah, I have one of my receivers from our second national championship team, Daryl Sweet, and he goes to Benjamin with me. Also, our running back, Chauncey Bowens, he was on that team. We also have Traquan Harris, who was on that team. But a lot of them ended up going to different high schools and all that but i still have good relationships with them and i'll never forget those days so i mean when you win a natty with someone i feel like that's definitely a bond you keep but (laughs) want a second natty in there what year was that did you guys go back to back yeah so we went back to back in 2017 and 2018 casual first time um in 2017 i threw a touchdown with um, 30 seconds left in the game, so that was crazy. This Damn. second year, we beat everyone pretty good, but it was still really awesome. But the first year was really, really crazy because we beat the defending national champs, too, from the year before. So especially winning it and winning it um, winning it like that was pretty awesome. We were checking out some of your highlight tapes on Huddle, and you can sling it, dude. <laughs> Thank you. So no middle school football, definitely a lot of Pop Warner, though. Can you talk a little bit about like that transition from, you know, Pop Warner football, you know, organized football to high school. I mean, you're just playing against grown men in some places. Like, the size of these seniors are ridiculous. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Especially in Florida, you know, the speed down here and the big hits and all that. It's just a huge change because you play against some grown men. So I'd say the biggest transition was just being able to change the speed of the game. A big reason why I also chose Benjamin and – being able to play for Coach Crusher was his system that he goes in. So his offense is really, you know, we have, like, really good relationships with the receivers. We throw the ball a lot, but we also have a good run game. So I'd say that it wasn't super hard for me, but the biggest thing for me was just being able to change the speed of the game. After the first game, I think I really realized that there's not a huge difference. You just have to change the speed and be able to take some hits and all that stuff. But A big part is also protecting yourself because you don't have, like, little linemen coming at you anymore. They're huge. They're, like, 6'3", 6'4", and they can run pretty fast. So, so yeah, that's a big difference. But I'd say besides for that, yeah, you just have to stay calm, too. You can't, like, get nervous from it. You just have to do a good job protecting yourself and, you know, having quick feet and adjusting the speed of the game, I'd say, is the biggest difference. And you have to be able to process stuff in your mind quicker, too, because everything just happens quicker. And, like, youth football, you can make some reads late and you can make a mistake but it won't look awful because you don't have like six three six four 
big linemen coming at you, but you have to do stuff quicker, and you just have to be able to process stuff. So that's the biggest difference. I played high school football up in Massachusetts, and it sounds like your youth football was pretty much like our high school football. <laughs> like yeah. Around 6'2", 200, you'd be one of the biggest kids that we see. So you say that the linemen are a lot bigger than you, but are you like one of the biggest quarterbacks your age? Yeah, I definitely am. Yeah, in Florida, you see a ton of big linemen. That's the thing I'd say. That changes a lot, too, going into high school. And, I mean, 6'2", 200 is definitely not, like, small. And that's what we saw online. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's accurate. I mean, you're only just wrapping up your freshman year going to be a sophomore. I'm sure you're not just going to stop growing all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's definitely accurate. You got some force behind the ball, and we were watching your highlights. You can sling it. Do you have any clue, like, what's the furthest you can throw? Do you have a number on that? Uh, 60 to 65 yards. The best part about my game is my deep ball as well. I have good yeah. accuracy on it and good touch, I'd say. I'd say that's the best part about my game. Damn, you're out here tossing bombs 65 yards. That's ridiculous. Is that in pads? Yeah, I'd say 60 in pads. I can throw the ball so deep with accuracy all across the field with pads on still. That is it's a wild. little bit harder, but it's not a huge difference. I mean, as Drew said, we were watching your highlights, and they were pretty ridiculous. <laughs> The ball was just, it came out of your hand a little different. We were like, oh, we understand why this kid is a top quarterback prospect. So a big part of football is obviously what you do on the field and growing up, but the whole other side is training. I mean, they talk about in the NFL how Sundays you play for free. It's all about the practice is where you really get paid, you know? When did you start training seriously for football off the field? I'd say after my seventh grade season, I really took it serious, and especially my the summer after my eighth grade year because I had to get my body ready to take some hits at the high school level and just be ready physically in general. So I'd say I took it the most serious then, but I've always been serious off the field. So I started weightlifting uh, mostly during eighth grade, before that season, before my eighth grade popcorn season then, especially after. I'd say I took it the most serious off the field because I had to get my body ready. I had to get stronger, faster, and more flexible too for my upcoming freshman season, which I was going to be the starting quarterback for. So I'd say that was when I started taking the most serious, you know, getting ready for my upcoming season. I mean, how much do you lift? You know, talk about some of your favorite exercises. What are you doing in the gym? I heard flexible there, and that's really interesting. A lot of players that we interview will talk about, oh, I can bench this much, but, like, you got Tom Brady out here. We're big (laughs) Patriots fans. Pliability, flexibility. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's some sus things going on with Guerrero or whatever. But like, regardless, that's a huge part of the game. So talk a little bit more about that if you could. The one thing I'll say is like that's huge, and not only in football but in sports in general, being able to have good flexibility. It's also going to help you have less injuries too. That's a big part of it. Being able to stay flexible and loose. And everything you do. So I'd say that that's a big part for me and something I've really focused on. The last year, I'd say, so in the last six months especially, that's the biggest thing that's changed for me, how much of a difference I've been doing, just flexibility, stretching every night, and making sure I'm always flexible and just trying to prevent injuries and all that. Because I'd say Tom Brady does a really good job with that because he's never really got hurt in all the – he, like, tore his ACL once. I remember that, like, early on in his career. I'm pretty sure. But that has to be big for him as well. And, the, like, the big-time QBs, you have to take that really serious. On top of just being strong, you have to be really flexible, too, and be able to take hits but also prevent yourself from injuries and all that. So that's big. And do you have a favorite exercise or stretch? I don't have a favorite exercise or stretch. I always foam roll and stretch with bands as well to just keep myself loose. And are you lifting on the bench yet? Are you squatting? How much weight are you putting up? I can squat 320, 325 with, like, depth, too. That's big for me. I don't want to, you know, go to the gym and say, like, I squatted this or that without depth. And my bench is – I can do 225 for three reps, so it's around 240, 245, my bench. I've always – especially the last year, I – put a lot of time at the weight room because going to high school and you know being like a beast on the field you have to spend a lot of time in the weight room that's really important and putting on some good muscle and strength 
for my upcoming season has been big to me too. But I say that I've gotten a lot stronger the last year. So yeah, that's my number seven putting up right now. Yeah, hearing you talk, man, it's it's easy to forget that you were just a freshman last year. And do you have like a diet as part of this as well? You know, a lot of athletes talk about eating is a big part of gaining muscle. So do you try to stick to any specific foods or diet, stay away from anything? Yeah, I'm big on chicken and rice. I love that. And I like steak and I always try to, you know, have vegetables and fruits too, but I always try to put protein to my body. Even when I'm not working out, but especially when I am putting a lot of protein in my body and being able to have a lot of energy too, but energy off the right stuff. So a lot of protein, chicken, it's great. I love rice and I usually only drink water too. So, Damn, really healthy. Do you ever eat out, treat yourself? Do you have any favorite restaurants? Maybe it's a healthy place, but any places you want to shout out like their food? Yeah, world's ending tomorrow. What are you eating? That's a hard one. <laughs> I got him. <'em>. Uh, <laughs> I like I like Longhorn a lot. Longhorn Steakhouse. Um, hmm, I love Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, In and Out Burger is pretty good. When I went to California, that's really good. But they don't have those in Florida. So I go to school out in LA, man, and. In and Out Burger is dope, but they don't have any bacon for your burger, and it just drives me insane. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah, the bacon. Yeah, yeah that's true. So apart from eating, you know, taking the gym seriously, film, huge part of football. Can you talk a little bit about that? How much film do you watch? I watch a lot, especially with my coach, because he's big on that. He's big in the, you know, being able to prepare for games the right way. And it's like studying for a test, you know what I mean? Like, I always say the big part about me, you know, preparing for an upcoming game is if I have a good week of practice and I study film good and I feel prepared for the game, I'd say, like, the game, which is, I get prepared to the test, is, like, pretty easy, you know what I mean? I feel comfortable, but I'd say if I don't watch film and I don't break it down right and I and I don't see the stuff right in the game and it doesn't, like, flow through my mind right, that is much harder. So I'd say that's really big for me. And really big for paying for games, too, because, like I said, it's just like studying for a test, you know what I mean? Being able to break down film and, you know, getting a look at what you're going to see in a game before you actually play, too. So it definitely helps me a lot. And being able to have a coach like Coach Cresser, who not only can watch it with you, but tell you everything that's happening and tell you all the ways you can beat the coverage and the defense you're seeing and all the fronts, what's good against everything. So that's definitely big for me. And do you watch a lot of film on yourself as well? Yeah, I do. I always try to, you know, take responsibility for preparing for games on my own too. Because, like I said, if I have a good week of practice and a good week of watching film and preparing myself and making sure that I'm comfortable with everything, the game feels much easier. And, you know, stuff just happens more quick and more fluid and it just feels more natural. So I'm always big on that. And when do you start watching film? How recently? I'd say I was big on watching film coming into my freshman year, especially during that season. I've always watched some film, but yeah, definitely going into my freshman season. And you ever watch film and then like see it play out on the field exactly how you watched it? Yeah, I'd say that that's really awesome for me because being able to break it down and then see it happen in the game, especially when you read it the right way and you just see it have in front of your eyes the stuff you've been preparing for yeah i've definitely seen it a couple of times and we've talked about training we've talked about diet we've talked about you know film there's a lot that goes into it how do you keep yourself motivated you're gonna have some tough days you're gonna have some days where you wish you could be doing something else so how do you keep yourself going well i always tell myself i have to trust the process because nobody's perfect even tom brady michael jordan they've all had off days or they've all gone through a slump or any of that, where they've had a couple games where they haven't played good, but it's a marathon. It's not a sprint, so you have to, you know, trust yourself and keep working hard no matter what happens and believe in yourself, too. So I'm big on that and big on staying humble throughout everything, but also being able to believe in yourself and have motivation because without confidence and without, you know, being able to know that you're able to do something and not doubting yourself, you can't really do anything in life, not only in sports, but just in life in general. That confidence is big. So that's what I'd say is big for me. That's the exact mentality that you have to have. And, you know, usually it takes kids a lot longer to really 
get that and, and to see that. So, you know, you're really mature for your age. And then on the other side of football, being a high school student, you still have a lot of academics that you also have to focus on. So what's it like balancing your academic life along with being a top quarterback prospect, the starting quarterback on your high school team? Well, first of all, like my parents always tell me that I have to take school first because, you know, without school and without a good education, let's just say something happens in college or something goes wrong or any of that, then I won't be able to do anything, you know, after football. So school is definitely really important and getting my degree is really important for me too. So I'd say I definitely have to balance it out, but I have to always, you know, put a lot of time and effort into school too because that's really important and that's big for me too. And that's always been big for me growing up as well. When you have that rare time to yourself, because you're balancing a lot of things here, like Drew just mentioned, is there anything you like to do, you know, anything to get away? I like going to the beach and even sometimes going to the gym gets my mind off stuff. But I like going to the beach and going to the pool and just relaxing, getting my mind off stuff sometimes. Just being able to chill with some friends. Dude, I always feel so much better after a workout. Yeah. 100%. That's facts. <laughs> and coming off of, you know, school, let's talk about the more fun side of school. What was your first offer for college? And, you know, how has the recruiting process been for you so far? Uh, my first offer was from Florida Atlantic University in October. And then things really started to uh, heat up for me in February. I got a bunch of offers from uh, University of Miami, Florida State, Wake Forest, Appalachian State. So I picked up some good offers that month, too. So that was really awesome for me. But, yeah, it really started to heat up February. And talk a little bit more about that first offer, like, when did you really start to get noticed? How do you feel about that? Like, was that just like a big little life changing moment? You know, you have the humble, but you also have to balance the confidence and you feel like, oh, I can take that next step. But to see that offer on paper, you know, that's got to feel different. Yeah, it was really awesome because it was like a dream come true because, you know, that's a big goal. That was always a big goal for me, like getting my first offer. And I'm always going to be humble and all of that. But it just gave me like more confidence that college coaches are seeing it now. But. I'd say I still have to be humble and all of that. But, yeah, it gave me, like, a realization that, you know, all my hard work's going to the right place. You know what I mean? Everything's starting to pay off. And what was the first time that you noticed that there were, like, college scouts watching you? Was that Pop Warner or was that when you got to high school? That was in high school. My high school coach told me that some college coaches were contacting him about me. And, I mean, another side of the college recruiting process is visiting camps. I mean, some people, they'll just get it off film. We've heard that before. But other people will go to camps maybe growing up. Have you gone to any camps? Yeah. Um, all my offers have been off film, but I've definitely been to some camps. I went to the Miami camp. I went to FSU, FIU. This summer, those were the big camps I went to. You must see a lot of other top prospects at those camps, right? It's always awesome to be able to see some of my friends that have offers too because I knew a lot of them before they had offers and we were all in like the same situation, like wondering when we were going to start getting recruited and just trying to work hard and hopefully it was going to pay off one day. So it's awesome to definitely see that we were all in the same spot one day and now it's all starting to pay off. Did you meet any coaches at these camps? Do you have any like favorite campus or any favorite visit you know that you experienced? I really like the University of Miami. Me too. Um, and Coach Lashley, <laughs> their offensive coordinator, is a really good guy. Not even including like the football stuff. He's really like a cool person. I really like his character on and off the field as well. And I'd say that's probably my favorite campus I've been to so far. I mean, you got to chill with the U. Drew over here, he's going to go crazy. He loves the U. He's been trying to recruit prospect after prospect. And this That's interview, my... he doesn't even have to do anything. He can just sit back and relax. It's unreal. It's my job, bro. <laughs> so attending these camps, uh, you know, playing football since you were a kid, you've talked about your family, you've talked about your coaches, you've talked about your friends. But talk a little bit about how all of these people have helped you through the process of college recruiting because we've heard that it can be brutal, it can be tough. Yeah, 
it definitely can be because there can be times where you won't be talking to any coaches or you won't be getting recruited the way you feel like you should or you could be putting in a lot of time on the field and in the gym and all that but you see other people getting offers and all that when you wonder why it's not you but the thing i'd say is you always have to still be confident and you have to trust in yourself and know that your time's going to come and if you do all the right stuff the coaches are going to notice you and at some point everyone's going to see all the work you put in that it's all paying off so i'd say that even if a lot of the stuff isn't like you're not seeing the results yet or it's not paying off how you want it to be you still have to trust the process and know that it's all going to pay off you just have to keep working it sounds like we're just talking to a normal high school kid however you know you're not really a normal high school kid you're what a top three quarterback prospect for 2024 and being one of the top quarterback prospects do you feel a spotlight on you or any added pressure yeah but i like it because i just have more to prove to everyone i feel like i still have so much to prove this upcoming year especially so I'd say that I like it. It doesn't make me nervous. I actually get excited from it. And I just think I just have more to prove to everyone. I have so much more left that I have to show to everyone. So it actually gets me excited. It's not like it's pressure, but like I take it the right way. It doesn't make me nervous. I mean, there's definitely going to be that added pressure, but it's good to see that you embrace it. And we've talked a little bit about handling football and academics, balancing those two. What about, you know spending time with friends off the field, maybe going out to a party, a female interest here or there. How do you balance that? Like, you know, that's a whole nother side of being just like a normal high school freshman that you're going to experience. I mean, regardless of whether you go out or not, it's just like a fact of life. Yeah, you're right. And I definitely try to live my life still like a normal high school freshman. I spend a lot of time, you know, with football and football related stuff, but I still try to, you know, spend time with my friends and do stuff not only football related so still like hang out with them are most of your friends on the football team or do you have like a lot of friends off the team too i'm close with a lot of people on my football team i have some friends off the football team too so it's mixed i mean that's honestly good to see you don't want to be stuck in the exact same pod for your entire life i mean obviously it's huge to have teammates that you're tight with but you also have those friends off the field what do you and your friends that aren't interested in football spend your guys' time doing we go to the beach and hang out, but I I always try to, you know, try to balance it out and still, you know, go to the beach and hang out with my friends and be able to take my mind off stuff as well. Yeah, that's really it. That's the main part. I mean, you're clearly not going to the beach every day, you know. We're just talking about taking yeah. some time to, you know, clear the mind a little bit, which is good. You have to take that time to yourself. That's good for your mind, for your mental. Yeah, absolutely. And we've talked a lot you know, positives and you seem to be a very optimistic person. You keep the correct mentality and, you know, that's good to see, but everyone does go through struggles. So do you have any, you know, tough moments in your career that you wouldn't mind sharing? And, you know, how did you overcome these struggles? Yeah, the thing I'd say is I've failed in a lot of stuff and I've put in a lot of hard work and I have been like immediately seen the results but I always trusted in myself and I believed in myself when I knew that my time was going to come and you know what's done in the dark seems to shine in the light so I always knew that you know I'm going to do a lot of stuff that no one's seeing and it's not all going to pay off immediately but in the long run it's all going to pay off and everyone's going to see all the hard work I've put in and all the stuff I've been doing when no one's been able to see and it's going to all pay off at the end of the day so yeah have you faced any injuries? Yeah, I haven't faced any like huge injuries. It's all that but, stretching. Yeah, so I'm definitely really fortunate for that. I mean, injuries are just a part of the game, and that's really good to hear that you haven't faced them yet, but I feel like with the pliability and just the mentality you have, you'll be fine to come back from whatever little nick and bruise you have because, I mean, football is yeah. just a contact sport. And speaking of that, what's the hardest you've ever been hit? I'd say the hardest I've ever been hit was when I played against uh, Shaman on Madonna. Uh, they're a team from Miami with a ton of top line recruits. They're, they have dudes. a big time four star DN. <laughs> the fat uh, boys. Kenyatta, yeah, Kenyatta Jackson, the class of 2022, who has a ton of offers Ohio State, Alabama, Oklahoma, 
Clemson, every big time offer. So, and he's a lengthy big tight end, long, lengthy. They had a Miami commit to Alan Hay, and they had a couple other huge linemen. So I'd say I took a hit on the biggest that I took was against them for sure. But I was able to bounce back from it, which I thought was big for me because you're going to take big hits in all levels of football, but especially high school and after that. But you have to be able to bounce back from it. And it just goes back to show you how important it is to protect yourself and knowing your hots and all that stuff and being able to make your reads quick because if you take too long, you're going to take a shot, which you learn you don't want to take quickly. Yeah, it's all about getting back up. The guys also just keep getting bigger and bigger. That's the thing. Have you ever played against uh, you know any guys who are currently on college teams, like any names that your, your household college football watcher would know? Even a deep sleeper, you know, yeah, like, look at this kid, he's going to be a freshman, yeah. look out, he could be a stud. Yeah, well, um, a big one's going to be Thaddeus Franklin at the University of Miami. I played against him, but he was a running back, so I only got to play one year so far of um, high school, so they're all going to be freshmen, but I've played against some um, people that I think are going to be big names, like Kenyatta Jackson, he's going to be a big name in college. Jalen Brown, I played against, who's a big-time receiver. In the class of 2023 at Miami, he's already a big time recruit, but a big time player in college, I think. So, yeah, those are definitely a couple of people that I played against that, if they're not in college already, they have potential to be big time players. So, and going even further than that to the NFL, are there any players that you model your game after? Any quarterbacks that you model your game after? I'd say the main one is Trevor Lawrence because I think my play style is similar to him. Where big and lengthy and long but we also are built well and we could run the ball too and I like his work ethic as well but I always try to you know follow Tom Brady as well because he's a really humble person the thing about him is he always looks for what he can get better at like even after winning Super Bowl after Super Bowl after Super Bowl he still has a quarterback coach he still works on every little thing he can fix and he still looks for any anything he can get better at so i'd say i always try to keep that mentality of always looking for what i can get better at and you know being able to fix any little thing i can do so i always stay humble and you know know that i can't be satisfied so i mean tom brady's the goat so that's not a bad person to try and model your game after yeah. and we're yeah. big brady fans even though he left us he's down in tampa now we still love you tom i still love you tom <laughs> Much for Tom Brady if he's listening, don't worry. <laughs> so speaking of Tom Brady, I mean, pretty clear, he's our favorite player. Is he your favorite player? And if not, who is your favorite NFL player? I like Patrick Mahomes a lot. It's definitely my favorite. I mean, Patrick Mahomes can absolutely sling it. Have you ever met any NFL players? I haven't met any, like, huge, like, big-time quarterbacks. Thank you so much for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure, Tyler. Hang time headlines. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much, bro. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much, man. We appreciate no it. No problem. Thank you. Balling crazy with the hang time.